So, just yesterday I received a message um, explaining that there, James was looking for some testimonials for the new uh, Mysteries for Fun from Kickstarter. So, uh, I went out, set up this stuff, as you can see, wrote up a little outline. Uh, is anyone actually here? Um, and here we are. So, what is Civitas Nihilium, and what was the Kickstarter? So, Civitas Nihilium is a solar player dice rolling tabletop game with an immersive soundtrack set within a cyberpunk universe. Uh, and as you can see on the screen, there's a little bit uh, different information that's taken from the Kickstarter page. But I actually have it right here. So, there's a whole lot in this. I'll kind of just shoot a box. Can I just keep it on the shelf when I play it sometimes? Uh, rip the magnet right here is, is my card. So that's me in there. So how did that happen? What is this thing? What's the what's it all about? Right? Well, the second second image that's on the screen now. Uh, is describing the world of the Civitas, of Civitas Nihilium. So, the idea is Wilfred Talon, um, this entrepreneur, he wanted to create a society where cities compete for citizenship for their populace, uh, building utopias of endless well-being and value. value. Um, and so he's the, the founder of the Civitas idea, and this is sort of the world that Civitas Nihilium takes place in, but the card game itself uh, has a slightly different premise. Um, so you actually play a veteran detective and you're working in the streets of Civitas Nihilium and you take with you your choice of rookie and a ton of cybernetic upgrades. Now in this universe everything is powered by ion. It's like this. I think it's some variant on moon rocks uh, which I think is a nudge at asteroid mining. Uh, everything is powered by it in uh, in this world. So there's Glee Head Gangs, it's one of the factions, and they use illegal personalized diffusion techniques. Um, what if that means? I'm not actually entirely sure. Uh, there are cultists, uh, there are underground elite, there are all sorts of different there are transhumanists, all sorts of factions, and they all play a role in very different but unique interconnected ways in this game. Um, a little bit too much to touch up on in this video, but there's a lot going on with that. Um, so, and there's something to do with uh, a god trapped between dimensions, it says here as well. Uh, but you are a, a, you're a detective, and you, you're you just operating... So in Civitas Nihilium, you know, the selling point, um, the way that they attract their customers is by saying that there is no crime whatsoever. So you're a cop, you're a detective. Um, there's obviously a secret police system, and there's something called a quantum short-term short memory processor, I believe it is, and uh, you've seen Men in Black, it's like the little flash thing they do and you can't see any, or you can't remember any of this stuff. So that is the the basis of the secret police, I suppose. Um, and it's a pretty open-ended game, a lot of different things can happen, um, but all of the things are essentially canon, and that's due to the, uh, the, the premise of the Civitas universe. So there's the Civitas idea, which is the world within Civitas Nihilium, it explains how that's all set up. But the Civitas universe is an overarching story that doesn't even necessarily start with Civitas Nihilium, and I'll get into that now. Uh, so here, shown here is now a quote from, it's the Traveler's Diary, as what it says, and it's actually from the extended lore document that came with the Civitas Nihilium card game. So it says, if the universe is infinite, then that means that somewhere, at some point, every single story that ever began with Once Upon a Time would be eventually realized in this reality. That, to me, makes me certain that our creativity from within our shared consciousness is, in fact, a mirror of all possible realities. It makes me believe that storytelling is the key to all existence. So at that point, I wonder, whose story are we in?
Early in 2017, a video was posted to Facebook, among a few other social media sites, which was cryptic in nature, and when investigated deeper, uh, shown behind me is actually a video explaining that process a little bit, um, we discovered a group called, um, now we means myself and um, collectively we call ourselves the Trialists, essentially. Um, so we found this group called Frederick and John Pharmaceutical, and they had these medical trials, hence the name The Trialist. And, well, embedded in this video, and the link that led us to this company was a plea for help. And it essentially stated that um, there is a man, named T, that stumbled on something that could alter the course of human history. And it was up to us to extrapolate this information without exposing his position within the group, um, while also going along for the ride, seeing what exactly this impact is going to be. So we started filling our, completing these trials. Um, we completed trial one, two, three, all, you know, we, so on and so forth. And along the way, we interacted with these alternate versions of ourselves and other members in our group um, from other dimensions with stunning levels of accuracy. Um, we saw multi-level layered ciphers, um, which were thought to be unbrutable. Um, which are to some extent, but only in certain circumstances. Uh, we, we came to find out. So we solved ciphers, and we met an AI, uh, which was named the multi the intelligent multi integrated synthetic intelligent matrix. That's what it was. It's MISM. Um, Count Spookula is some hacker in the deep web that we met, and they. Uh, send us relayed information sometimes from the inside. Uh, there's, I mean, there was a lot that went on there. So over time, we began, we began learning about this thing, this occurrence or this phenomena that we dubbed the White Room. Um, and it was a, a photonic fr a prison of sorts, sort of like this, this space between dimensions where photons could take varying lengths um, and certain properties of them didn't necessarily they didn't work in the same sort of ways as you'd expect in a 3D or a 2D geometric world. Uh, it just didn't have these constraints. So, um, this ultimately um, became known as Profundum um, in some circles, not in all circles. So, shown here uh, additionally is an image of from the Subdesk Mahalian Extended Lore document talking about the discovery of Profundum. So, as it turns out, within the universe of Civitas Nihalium, they stumbled on a very similar occurrence, and they began getting communication from people trapped or through this dimension. You know, some something was going on there, but they couldn't quite decipher it. So they called it Profundum. Um, there's more to that, but I'll leave it there, essentially. Um... And well, the last thing that we remember regarding Profundum in the right, the White Room was, uh, well, we were in contact with an entity named Azure Majorana, and he was a physicist. He was working on a boat year, a long time ago, I don't really remember when, he disappeared. Well, we got in contact with him, and we believe that he may have stumbled on this photonic prison, and in some way, through experimenting with it, gotten trapped within it. So... We established communications with him through MISM, uh, this AI, uh, which is actually a semi-biological computer that connects. It's sort of like a neural, a neural connection to hardware, to quantum experimentation capabilities, which is how it connects through d dimensions, how it, you know, through the photonic. It's you know, it's ridiculous. It's very advanced stuff. So, the last communications that we received where a tour stating that something dark was coming towards him, that he could see the Queen Mary, he needs to find the edge of the boat, and then nothing. So much nothing, in fact, that when we looked back at the Frederick and John website to see if it existed, it was gone. Every single social account correlated with it, gone. No traces. So, we traced our steps backwards, and we thought, the person that uploaded the video that contained within it the plea for help, what if we reached out to them? So we did. 
and we introduced ourselves, tried to explain the concept, and it didn't make any sense. They didn't know who we were. They'd never heard of anything like that, but as it turned out, they were writing a, a script for a film. They were screenwriters, and everything they had written was our experiences, exactly. The ultimate Mountains of Madness, you know, scenario. So we went with that and we said yeah you know what we are a writing group we're just in character right so none of this did happen we're just in character but you are writing this and you're relevant in our dimension so we need to we need to keep this connection we need to see this through um that led to the creation of the trial all work together we, we created um the we called it the white room so I'll play that in the background now. Now the white room was originally supposed to be the uh... So now I'm looking for it. The Observations of Trial 108, which is a much longer script, much more detail, but it ended up being too difficult to do the things that we wanted in Sansa with the technical limit limitations that we had at the time, so it did not come to fruition, what you see behind you is what we got instead. Um, the Observations of Trial 108 does exist still in the archives though, it's not gone anywhere, it's still there. Uh, so while this is all going on, James is continuing to write a script and so on and so forth, but out of nowhere, almost, he gets uh, a floppy disk. in the mail. Just a bunch of jumbled letters on it. And he reaches out to us and he's like, well this is oddly, you know, similar to some of the experiences that you relayed to us. Floppy disks from around the world. Can you, what is this jumbled text? So it turned out to be encrypted and auto-keep engineer with the alphabet key T, password to stay safe, as shown on the screen. And it was a message. And it said, don't be alarmed. Your projects are special. Your inspiration is open doors. We have a group that we are trying to get back to their home dimension. So, as it turns out, that last communication with Tor, something had happened and we lost contact with Dimension 108, as it were, and we are now in 107 as it is. Um, hence the disappearance of FMJ and all traces of them. So, he tells them to explain to us his plans, get the game made, and uh, the pathway home will be revealed through this game. So, what happened next? Well, we got emails, and it says, I'll show you right here. Dear citizen, as part of your repatriate into our beloved citizens, Civitas, I am obliged by the CRC to write you and confirm your appointment with the medical team here at the Frederick and John Pharmaceutical. All new citizens must be checked thoroughly prior to Patriot status being confirmed. This includes the time of your appointment. With that in mind, I have a couple of questions. So far, I have you in my regards as an outsider coming into see in with a few vague goals. Is it correct to assume that you'll be looking for an occupation here in the city? Or are you of suitable financial freedoms where you will not have to work? If you are looking for work, what is it? I am guessing you will be choosing to live in a nice part of the city? Just off the record, it's best to avoid anywhere near the Talon de DPU's dump. Looking forward to brief answers and future correspondence. Dr. Brontus. So this serves as the direct link that FNJ, Frederick and John Pharmaceutical, as a company, exists within the Civitas universe. So what's this mean in a bigger picture? Well, these multiple dimensions and the trials that go out throughout these dimensions the Civitas universe is one such dimension. I mean, if you remember the, from earlier, I can pull it up again, that um, all stories are all possible realities, and the link being creativity and storytelling. So this is another reality, just the same as um, Dimension 108. And the only way for us to get back is to pursue those common themes that they manifest and to solve the puzzles within uh, the Civitas universe so that eventually maybe the trialists can get home. Maybe not. Maybe something else will happen. 
Uh, that's actually completely up to us. So from this point forward, I'm actually going to introduce Mysteries of Profundum. So that is the next game in the series. And I have two things to share regarding Mysteries of Profundum. I have the demo, um, which I'll play, as well as a trailer, which I'll play. So I'm going to start with the demo. Alrighty. So this is the demo for the Mysteries of Profundum. Uh, it will feature all locations, um, several alternate storylines and endings. Uh, now it says that the game is about 80% complete. Uh, much more than that was included from the looks of the trailer, uh, which I'll show after the playthrough of this. So let's go into a new game. And now we have two choices. We have Brother Tyler, that's me. Um, the ex-mayor of Civitas Nihilium. After the reveal of Nihilium's lies to the League of Patriots and your exposure to the bizarre interdimensional breakdowns that were happening across your city, Talon Corp had no choice but to remove you from the position of public office during the days of decay. You stayed in Civitas Nihilium, but so seeked refuge with the followers of Ator Majorana, hoping to gain a higher understanding of what was really happening inside, not just your beloved Civitas, but also reality as you know. The Sister NJ, the ex-pleasure model slave bot, turned none of a tour. Uh, after being saved by a detective and the rookie during an exceptionally rough night in the streets, uh, she was paired as a key witness to a crime, which is a key mechanic in the card game. Uh, alongside a founding brother of the Jurai Brotherhood. Um, brother David released her um, from her slave son status and gave her sanctuary at the Warrens of Enoch. Um, with her new freedom and her curiosity for science, the Brotherhood feels like it's a great place to start the process of becoming more human than transhuman. Um, so I'm gonna go with Moth Sail. Uh, the year is 2229, in this dimension known as the Civitas universe. The world is broken up into small city-states known as the Great Civitases. Each Civitas charges a premium to every inhabitant, and an independent body known as the League of Patriots controls and scores each Civitas based on the monthly number of new paying residents, a competition-based framework aimed at promoting lifestyle for population, delivering an ultimate utopian society driven on consumer choice. For over 100 years, the League has been dominated by one Civitas, a giant metropolis quasi-ruled uh, by its semi-cryogenically frozen former president Wilfred Talon. The city's name is Civitas Nihile. Recently, um, many new Civitases have risen through the League of Patriots, and things have begun to fall apart uh, for Talon. So, with its top position in the, the League under a huge threat, Nihilium is, or has released a series of marketing and public relation endeavors claiming that it had eradicated all crime, um, which is the premise of Civitas Nihilium, of course. Um, so, contradictingly to this, actual crimes reported at the CNPD exploded in number, um, and this corruption in Nihilium was eventually exposed. So, with Talon claiming that evidence collected by his secret police pointed towards the sabotage um, by rival Civitas, so, aside from these claims, this started the period in the Civitas Nihilium's history, coined by the League's Press Association as Nihilium's Days of Decay. CN, in her desperation, began to accept anyone who would apply. Gleeheads, gangs, hackers, rogue transhumanists, and fanatical cults now had easy access into patriotism. Um, what was now, for what was once the underworld in Civitas Nihilium, had now, now had the freedom to thrive. Yet, some took on the demise of Nihilium as an opportunity to build on their own. Uh, as the factions within CN grew stronger, rumors circulated that many faction leaders were investigating the options of starting some tasks of their own. None more so direct as the Geronic Brotherhood, who had already started print of their own Civitas uh, at a secret location across the Swollen Sea. So, uh, just to clarify, printing a Civitas is, if you imagine prefabricated buildings, um, it's a prefabrication of a societal complex or of a 
zone for industrial development. So you, you, it's like a, imagine a hexagon on the globe. Um, like the globe is just divided into hexagons or whatever shape is deep deficient. They're probably hexagons. Uh, just stamp it out. Everything that was there is converted directly into raw resource and it's used to build, um, as far as I understand it. <laughs> and that, I believe, will be expanded on in the Simtas City Builder, which is uh, still upcoming. Uh, so now we are in the main theater of the Duronic Warrens of Enoch, uh, in Simtas Nehalim in 2229. His brother David says, I am glad we decided to reform back at the Warren, our original home. Here we can re rebuild our follower base, prepare for the next stage, and our transcendence into profundum. The Iron Charge may have brought us closer to Athor, but we still are greeted within all of Nehalim circles as petulant drains. The treatment by the wider world of the interdimensional being we know and love is a reflection of us as a species. We consider ourselves to be human, yet the fear surrounding our people and the negative actions is nothing short of rodent-like. Sat deep within the Warrens of Enoch, you find, I find myself drifting between listening to the speech of your leader, Brother David, and daydreaming about the possibility of meeting Azura Majorana. So, do I listen to the rest of the speech, continue to daydream about uh, Azor, or head out to the lobby? Um, listen to the rest of the speech. That is why the silly little mice must first awoke in their minds the glory that is already presented to us, uh, to our brotherhood. But being awoken from a deep distraction is never easy. These rodents need our help, uh, and what better way to ensure regular intrigue than to reach those who are already very close to the truth? That is why I propose the migration to Theodore. Um, continue listening to Brother David, go back to Daydream, have a lovely, so I'm going to keep listening because, um, so far, I, Theo is not someone we should trust. Now, it sounds like he's doing this for strategic advantage, but it doesn't sound like a political, um, safe move, uh, it never is, it never has been, uh, a sanctuary for us, for all of us, he says in his sanctuary for all of us. So... At this point, I'm going to go back to daydreaming. Um, and so I start thinking about particles, and it's horror. So he was uh, conducting particle experiments off the coast of his Latin homeland when uh, an overcharged surge with the seawater coolant failed to disperse the fusion reaction, uh, and it sent a tour from his home dimension, uh, which we now know as Fundum, uh, into a subgateway photonic prism. Uh, so it was slightly off of that earlier, I suppose. A uh, place of physical existence through the light form. Uh, he had told the story many times uh, to the many brothers and sisters who fled to speak with him back when it was possible, uh, and he said that arriving from profundum into this prison is like arriving into an empty heaven. Uh, you ponder on how it could be possible to arrive in a completely whole and conscious state, yet have all of your atoms turn into photons while still remaining a huge essence of the person you were before. Could that make you a god or simply a powerless angel trapped in a white room? Uh, and so, like, David finishes his speech with a thank you. Um, and everybody claps and everything. So I head out in the lobby, and uh, there's this teal glow from the, uh, the surrounding metropolis. So I'm walking out. Uh, I see someone I recognize, so I walk over. And um, it's Brother Robert, and he greets me with a smile. He says, inspirational as always, and I hope that you can find some time in your busy schedule uh, to read my report on the CA-40 transhumans. We could do re really do with your input. Um, CA-40 transhumans, now that's a card in Simi Testa Helium that turned out to be very important, actually. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. So I'm actually gonna ask uh, who they are right now. It says there's a small group of uh, young transhumans who have been surviving around the Helium the last few years, and uh, the report is fascinating. And, uh, I'm interested, just take a look. So, I say, well, you know, what do you what do you think about this recent speech? And he says, well, he's the leader, as, as you know, so it's his job to organize regular rallies here at our HQ and, and the Warrens, and his speech this evening seemed to center largely on the impact uh, our brothers and sisters are now having on the hunt for Tor, uh, and his frustrations surrounded the judgment placed on the Brotherhood's activities across the Helium. He's right, the path to Profundum could lead to the wishes of all factions within the sea and being realized, but he's also unfortunately correct where he slams the leadership for a lack of urgency and vision in these matters. He calls for leaving, his calls for leaving sea and is him showing his exceptional leadership yet again. Yet I'm 
unsure personally if this is a move we must make soon, uh, because Nihilium has proved itself to be a great source of ion, and as you all know, we need as much of this energy resource as possible if we are to re-establish contact with the Photonic Messenger. Uh, so, I, I'm just going to walk away. The North Complex. Um, it's a large, or it has a large mezzanine floor um, surrounding it, and there are little, there's a library of bookcases covering the four walls. The books uh, feature stories, journals, teachings, uh, and such things from the Photonic Messenger, which would be a tour, along with analytical findings taken by the Brotherhood, with the aim to share knowledge that will help them to get closer to Profundum. Um, so I'm gonna head further towards the library. And at the tip of the large hall is a thick maroon carpeted staircase leading up to the library. On the wall beside you is a large colorful mural of teal, red, yellow, green, and a deep orange. Ben <coughs> uh, beneath it are the words, bring forth your ion, the energy of trans-dimensional commune, zip desk 2230. Look a little closer and I notice um, that it's very abstract. Uh, it looks like there's some sort of a, a stairwell drifting thousands of miles downward and under the word is an extremely small type is the word transdimensional and um, below that is what reads as a cipher so let's keep going uh, I'm at the library now and uh, there are ancient oak bookshelves and they sit flush on all, all around the sides um, on a marble floor and it has all of the knowledge of the, of the Brotherhood. So, just look around, and it's huge. It's just it's the same thing. Uh, so, I believe most of these are actually not included in, in, in the trial. But one of these, you have to interact with. Right, so that was the demo. There's actually not much to see there. If you click the wrong thing, it ends it, as you as you saw there. So <laughs> I'm not going to show you two things. Um, the first thing that I have is some interesting bits that were retrieved from this game because there are multiple branching playthroughs, multiple decisions. Uh, I actually missed out on something that I was uh, expecting to encounter. So I'm going to go through that as well as the other things real quick. So I'm just going to go through this briefly. Uh, this is the stuff um, that was included in the game. So it's got some background music. It's got some clicky noises. Um, um, and then the terminal here is kind of interesting. So that is part of the expected bit that I missed. Uh, I'll go there now, or I'll actually next. We just want to showcase these uh, sprites. We've got the font used in game. Capital, lowercase, and symbols, I believe, or something. Little inventory box. Text box. Intro sprite. Title. And here, here's the terminal, so I'll put that over there. Stats box. So you can imagine this, so this sound, and this popping up. And now what, what appears in it? Well, let's, let's open this text here. Text, this shows all possible branches. It's going to be a big document. I'm not going to go through that. Um, it is publicly available. Discovered secrets, however. All right, I'll go through. So... These are the two ciphers that we found. I don't, I didn't indicate where they're found, where they were found, but there were other areas within the, the demo I didn't showcase as well. Um, the book names, which this correlates to a cipher. 
And um, so when this appears, this is what you are greeted with. And uh, yeah, I don't really, uh, to be honest, remember where we are with, with this, but I think this is still going on um, right now. So, you know, see where this goes. With that, I will now show you the trailer for the upcoming Mysteries of Profundum, which showcases how much more has been included after uh, this demo. This is a broadcast for the inhabitants of Profundum. An incoming message from Wilfred Talon. Dearest gods of Profundum, my name is Wilfred Talon, I am the ex-president of Cybetas Nihilium, and I come to you today as an ambassador of my dimension. For over 100 years we have watched your universe, due to the great work by legendary professors Dr. Anders Ilko Ford and Dr. Lorenzo Gentile my people have been able to see into your dimension. We have discovered that you control every aspect of it. You create our dreams and you destroy our lives. Some of us have become addicted to you. Some of us have become devoted to you. Many of us have tried to live normal lives in the knowledge that we are being watched, tormented, loved, and played. My message to all of you is the most salient and demanding I have ever had to communicate before. Know your power and know that you are in control eh, of the universe destined for war. Whatever you do to us, do it with responsibility, thought, and care. The players are the creators, the judge, the jury, and the executioners. Combine the any egg cake to enter the labyrinth, to enter the temple of your miserable bliss. Remember your strength, your influence and power. As that is the difference between life and death in the Civitas universe. One of the symptoms of cultural disintegration is simply that people lose the ability to distinguish between uh, dream and memory.